Hello, everyone. My name is Kai Infante. I'm here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm, a, I'm bringing today for you some marketing trends and employer branding in Latin America. Hope you like it. So to begin with, um, my name is Kai Infante. I'm the regional vice president for the region for Latin America for Radency. You, you might know Radency from all over the world. So I've been seven years uh, leading the company in the region. So <laughs> some experience, some hassle here that I want to bring today and, and share with you. Um, I'm also the co-founder for Employer Branding Brazil. That second logo you can see, the yellow one. Uh, that's the Brazilian community talking about employer branding. Along with two friends, now partners, we built a 40,000 people in Brazil that want to learn from us, that want to share best practice. So employer branding in Brazil, I would say is a reality. But um, overall, we still have some um, challenges and that's what I come here to, to discuss today with you. Uh, I was also nominated last year uh, for employer brand leader uh, as a global leader for the World Employer Branding Day. I was very happy because, you know, I'm here sitting in Brazil, doing my job, and all of a sudden I got this. So I didn't win, but still just to be there as a nominee was a, a nice recognition for everything that I've been doing here in the market. And I'm also a local HR influencer for different uh, initiatives like this HR Summit or Go Integral, some local um, companies that they have all this ranking because everything that I do for the market, everything that I write, the events that I'm part of, uh, I try to educate the market on employer branding mainly. So yeah, I try to sell, I try to educate whenever I do, whenever I achieve one, I'm going to achieve the second one. And that's more or less my challenge over the last seven years. So, okay, let's talk about a little bit Latin America. And to get started, um, I think it's nice for us to have an over, uh, overall view or overview on, on LATAM. Besides Brazil, of course, as I said, I do run everything Mexico until Argentina. I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's where the biggest market is. That's the biggest country, biggest economy. But it's not only about Brazil. And when we have the region, I know it's not a country, but I mean, when you see the region, and there's a lot of similarities in the different countries, mainly we speak Portuguese here in Brazil. Most countries will speak Spanish. We don't speak Spanish, but some people think we do. I personally can, but it's not a reality for most people in Brazil. And some other islands or smaller countries, they're going to, you know, uh, have their first language for Dutch or English, some other. But again, mainly we mainly you all would speak Portuguese and Spanish. So the workforce and the size of the region is quite big, right? Brazil and Mexico definitely lead these numbers. Um, and when it comes to GDP, still, it's a big number. Seems promising. Just want to have some numbers to get started here with you. Um, this is something very, very interesting. Uh, and I did this presentation <laughs> or part of it a few years ago. I did update some of the numbers. And to people understand and see how big the opportunity in LATAM is. So when it comes to the 10 largest or biggest cities in America, not only Latin America, eight of them are in LATAM. Sao Paulo, where I am, then Lima in Peru, Mexico, and so on. So, of course, United States, North America, including Canada and Mexico, they lead, of course, the region. And Americas, when it comes to market, um, to GDPs, blah, 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 all the trends, everything happens in the United States. Of course, the economy is huge. But again, when we start seeing these numbers, we can see there are specific opportunities and i'm going to discuss a little bit of those over the next 15 20 minutes with you these are the top companies in latam so probably one or two logo you might have seen before but when you come to local companies a lot of them are brazilians others as i mentioned they are mexican 
And you have this specific one, Mercado Libre, which is a huge e-commerce or more than that. Now they have a fintech, they have their logistics. I mean, it's, they have, I think, eight uh, group, uh, eight companies uh, within the group. And that specific is huge because if you're in the United States, for instance, you use Amazon, right, to do everything or to buy whatever you feel like. In the region, not only Brazil, but again, in the region, Argentina, Brazil, uh, Mexico, main countries, Amazon's like the third or fourth player. Besides Mercado Livre, which is by far the number one, we have local players. And with, when it comes to bank, like Itaú and Bradesco here in Brazil, or other companies, other markets, again, local companies, they have their strength, right? So, and that's already maybe one tip that I can give to you is, yes, there is opportunity <laughs> to make business in LATAM with local companies. And of course, multinational companies that are based or that they have operations or, I don't know, they do business in the region. Yet, there are some challenges. <laughs> and I want to bring to you uh, five topics that I've been 16 years in the HR industry, another five or six in the advertising industry, uh, all mixed up, or the last seven, as I said, in the employer brand industry specifically. And servicing HR is quite hard compared to what you have in Europe, compared to what you have in the United States. Again, being part of a global company, I can see the, the difference. And again, I'm here to share some of the reality we have. Again, I see this as an opportunity. Otherwise, I would be here for seven years and I still have a long journey to, to go. So I hope you guys share some of my my thoughts here and i will say that in the end but feel free to connect with me anytime on linkedin on instagram i mean if you want to understand more about the region about how we do business here happy to help okay so first point i want to bring here is how we do business i know this is not only in latin but the short term versus the long term especially when we're talking about building a brand right so you don't build a brand in weeks or in a couple of years you need time right and this is also something that on my sales pitch that's what i try to tell people right so what do you know about this company oh this company whatever the segment is of course i'll bring like a, a strong competitor oh they have a strong brand oh people want to work for them okay did you know that they have been working with an employer brand strategy for let's say four or five years. Wow, I didn't know. Because most times I'm going I'm the first person talking to the company about employer branding. That happened so many times. And that's still gonna happen several times, I'm sure of it. So I try to compare. So look, do you know why it's hard to get people from this company or why it's easier for them to attract? Because they started four or five years ago. So again, it's not like a short term. If you want to start doing something, you should start now, okay? Then you develop a strategy, all the EVP, blah, blah, blah. By the way, that's something we're still doing a lot here in the region, building EVPs. I know a lot of regions, we are a step ahead, talking about data, about technology, things like that. This is still, I would say, a few companies have the same maturity. As you have in Europe or in the US. So that's the number one topic that I want to bring to you. Then nobody has money to do so, <laughs> which is hard. I know it's a reality all over, especially this year. 2023 has been a, a year for us to survive. <laughs> Most of you probably will share the same feeling. And that's something that's again related to the first topic because. If you don't think long term, you never have the budget. You never start spending money to build a strategy, to invest in media, even to build an EVP, right? Or how do you get started? Ah, let's do something. And this is something like, okay, let's do some posts on LinkedIn, or let's create an Instagram for careers. Oh, let's go to a job fair at a specific university. So it's all these little tactical things that they don't connect in terms of message, in terms of what's happening this month, next month, what 
target I need to reach? How many people do I need to, to attract in order to, to fill the positions I have open? What positions do I have open today, for next semester, for the year? So these are answers that, again, connect to this short term versus long term. And we still see a lot of tactical movements rather than building a proper strategy. OK, where I am now, where I want to be in three to five years time. And of course, in the middle of the way, you do the little tactical things, right? So with that being said, it's hard for people because, you know, a lot of CHROs, HR directors that I talk to, even business people I said, I've worked all my life without employer branding. Why do I need this right now? Then, of course, you need to explain the importance, companies that are doing this globally, eventually locally. I mean, we do have some local nice case right now but it took me like two three four years maybe to get like proper business case right again I've been here for seven years then this is very challenging because most job boards throughout Latin or the local ones they're not open or they don't want to be seen as media right when you use global job boards like Indeed for instance you have you can actually although you can apply within you have the hosted apply as they say you can eventually apply within the, their site usually you have like a button saying okay apply into career site so people and as a tactical thing or part of the strategy you can and you should by the way uh, do your sponsored jobs in all the different job boards and then what happens you take candidates to your career site right and then have the experience and then people will get to know more about you and eventually they're going to decide whether they're going to apply for the job yes or no what happens here is all of them even if you okay I'm willing to pay for this API you know I want to have candidates coming to my career site it's very hard for them to open their mind in that sense so when it comes to strategy building again something bigger how do you use job boards, local job boards? And the type of reports and numbers and, and metrics they have, they're not the same. So this is very challenging in terms of, okay, how do we calculate the ROI of specific local job boards? It's very hard, yet not impossible. We try to find ways and to connect sometimes or most times are more manually. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we make our miracles here. But still, that's another challenge. This is very hard. As I said, I've been 16 years in the industry, and that has been happening for at least 16 years, which is HRs. And I learned that with a friend who said they like to have like a hero day. So I wake up, I'm gonna do my job. So 9 a.m., I'm gonna start browsing all the CV in, into the different local job boards. Eventually, they're gonna use linkedin seats things like that so my job is to prospect clients blah okay let's go 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 so and this friend said oh it's like i'm a hero because once you find the correct candidate and once you hire this person job done what you try to do as you all know as employer branding we try to do the other way around right so we get people getting to know you applying to your jobs and then you're going to talk to the people that already applied for your job much easier should be you all know that we as latin people or right, representing most part of the the market right now they don't do that way so they'd rather hire the local job boards not only to post jobs but because the local job boards they have big data database of cvs and why is that because they don't act as a media you see that how you get kind of you can't move on from it hard still not impossible again seven years I've been here another seven 14 21 how many years <laughs> I have um to, to contribute to the market I'll do my best in order to change that that's challenging and in the end of the day me again representing uh an advertising company or HR tech now, uh, globally uh, speaking, that's very hard because again, why do I need to spend money with an agency? Why do I need to have creatives? Why do I need to spend media uh, money on media? 
and so on so that put us in not a bad situation but again another obstacle we need to overcome so in a glance <laughs> not so briefly maybe but you can have a, an, a quick overview of how the hr which usually looks after the employer brand look like and that's the other thing too there are still few companies in latam that have like an employer branding team right an employer brand leader employer brand analyst coordinator intern whatever it is so usually i know that globally the responsible for employer branding is usually connected to the hr but you have positions like the talent marketing specialist or an employer brand leader all this i mean that has been happening longer overseas than we have in here so again if you you're not focused on doing employer branding or building strategy what are you going to do back to the first question just tactical things because employer brand is a must people finally understood that i need to have an employer brand and i do have something to tell i do have stories to tell but again they don't build the bigger bigger picture that is challenging and one of the reasons here for everything that i'm talking here is called trust and i brought some numbers don't mean to scare you but <laughs> again how do we see the opportunity how we do something different for the years to come i've been doing this for 16 years again in the ha industry pretty much half of it in the employer brand industry and it's all about trust getting to know people building longer relationships because this 82 percent of the population overall once you get closer to, to anyone and by this number specifics not about only business if i know someone in a party in a dinner whatever oh this person wants something for me why this person has been so nice to me there's something behind all this kindness <laughs> what i mean yeah it's different because you guys in europe people in the us and some other regions you already trust people right we need to build over and over and over again still eventually is not enough right i know people do business with other people mainly in the term again the more you know people the more close you are to these this people and they understand okay these people this person just it's not only about business eventually could become business of course so takes time okay and again 62 percent of the population have little or no trust in other people again that's just something that happens we can't fight against this but we need to understand in order to build local relationship so it's very hard okay I want to open a business I want to open one of the business with a, a company in Latin it's going to take time <laughs> not my fault right I'm just a messenger here I'm just bringing you <laughs> how it is to do business in the term so again that's why I five years ago I've been seven years at Fragrance and five years ago I created the employer brand in Brazil the community as I mentioned that's where I build my credibility that's where I have people coming to me because I'm not there to do business I'm there to evangelize them tell the market how employer branding their benefits how it's done what it is what's not and people understood hey this guy seems nice again it does help me to do some business but it's not the solution for everything I need to do all the goals that I have <laughs> all the the numbers that I need to achieve they're still challenging but again being part of a community and building credibility does help and when it comes to some of the trends and that's the candidate vision I don't think there's much difference from some other market but again we're talking about LATAM what has been happening this year and it's going to be for the next year career plans wellness and compensation because our economy overall is not as big and strong as Europe or European countries or US Canada so we do have something in terms of stability plus this compensation which is at the end of the day it is important I'm not saying it's not important for other other regions but here put us in a tougher decision right 
And again, because the economy is under so much pressure overall, the employees, they're expecting to get more paid. And with employer branding and all the, of course, all the offers all around. So that puts the employers in a bad situation because, I mean, you need to create a nice environment. You need to pay more then you all the employee experience needs to be perfect. I mean, there's so many challenges out there and so many companies selling something maybe better than your, so think about it. Um, the other part is 60% could change jobs. They're not looking for a job, but if you knock on their door, they might listen to you and depends on the story you tell, they might change sides. Think about it as well. And yet, and that's very cultural. We are very optimistic. I mean, you probably know how Latin people are. We like other people, although we have the trust problem, but like, you know, people to people. But this is important. 61% is concerned about losing their job. So I'm working here, but where's my mind? Will I have my job tomorrow? Will I have my job next week? So that's very concerning. And then on the company side, um, and that's something very nice to, to share with you, 45% of the organizations are looking for 100% remote team. And for the region, I think that's very important because a lot of countries are small, right? Brazil, Mexico, Brazil over 200 million people, Mexico over 100 million people. So we, we are big countries, big workforce. But other countries, they might have 5 million people, 10 million people, seven million people so when you have the remote team and again they're gonna all speak the same language different accents no different vocabularies but still they all speak spanish or most of them speak spanish that puts you in a in a, an advantage or a competitive advantage advantage because if you're in chile you can hire people in colombia in peru any other country right so that's another tip i want to bring to you right because they've been hearing the candidates they are considering to pay more and if you need to pay more you need to cut costs cut costs somewhere not to people eventually to people you need to sell more but the economy is kind of stable the the numbers looking at 2024 the region should uh rise one to two percent so it's not a big a big growth for any market so again tough decisions for the companies in order to follow what candidates are saying and diversity so I guess again this is uh all over the place uh but yes they are they're connected to, to the remote teams talk about diversity in Latin is very broad as well um the again all this remote work could help to bring diversity and yes this is a challenge for most countries most companies women black people lgbt so these are the the train three main uh diversity groups that we're looking at when it comes to employer brand strategies or employer brand activations how do we hire or how do we have a more diverse work workforce within each company and it's very hard we all know that when it comes to different countries, again, whatever I say in Brazil could be different in Argentina and it's different in Ecuador. So again, <laughs> not easy, but, and last here, my question for you, should we invest in Latam then? Is it worthwhile doing business in Latam? Well, I've been here seven years, as I said, again for you, yes but bear in mind that it does take time right seven years but i have like one year two years three years as total like two three years for people get to know a little bit of more of the employer brand still seven years later five years that i've been running the eb community in brazil there's still a lot to do and still a lot to educate right so i'm very pleased to be here to share what's going on in the region and I actually encourage other, I mean, if you are a company, yes, help local people, your local team in building their strategy. If you want to invest in the region, please do so. And the other 
maybe last tip that I can give you. It's cheap, you know, like because as I said, there's there's not a lot of strategy, a lot of media out there. So this is still cheap to invest in the region. And yes, the opportunity is big. Without being said, muito obrigado. Muchas gracias. Thank you. This is my Instagram, Caio Infante. It's not Ciao. Some people say we read Ciao as the Italian. No, it's Caio. It's still Italian name, by the way. Caio Infante Oficial. And my LinkedIn is Caio Infante. Thank you so much. It was so nice to be here. And I hope you have enjoyed. Talk to you soon.